Following the wide-scale devastation of the Great Galactic Wars over 3,600 years before the Battle of Yavin, the Sith Order diminished in power, allowing the Jedi and Old Republic to rule the galaxy. Over the next 1600 years, the Sith diminished to the point where many believed the threat eliminated entirely and order extinct. Yet the Jedi eventually learned the truth of their enemy's survival revealed to them through the betrayal of a former ally. Considered a brilliant and powerful master of the Jedi Order, Phanius was an Umbaran male whose reputation, though respected, grew controversial as a result of his increasingly egocentric philosophies, believing the only certainty in life was the existence of one's own consciousness, and thus began to question the reality of everything outside his being. This led to a selfish ideology where his own ambitions superseded all other considerations. Though what he taught was clearly in stark contrast to the beliefs of the Jedi, some were intrigued by the notion that true strength and control came from the acquisition of power. But the Council outright rejected his ideas, leaving Phanius so outraged he abandoned the Order entirely, becoming the earliest known member of the Lost, Jedi Masters who left the Order over irreconcilable ideological differences. Beginning a journey to explore his solipsistic philosophy without restraint, he stole a rare Sith holocron from the Jedi Temple and studied its contents in secret, turning fully towards the dark side of the Force. Through his study of the Sith, Phanius broke the mental barriers limiting his perception to embrace an entirely self-centered philosophy where his will was everything and nothing else mattered. Vowing vengeance against the Jedi for rejecting his ideas, he set off in search of the last remaining Sith clans scattered throughout the galaxy, uniting them under his rule as Darth Ruin, master of the new Sith Order and Empire. Under Darth Ruin, a new Sith creed was created, summarizing his own personal ideology in stating, There is no passion, there is solely obsession, there is no knowledge, there is solely conviction, there is no purpose, there is solely will, there is nothing, only me. Returning to the Old Republic, he initiated the Fourth Great Jedi Schism by contacting those former colleagues interested in his teachings and turning them to the dark side. In possession of powerful forces and having no qualms about sacrificing large numbers of his own people, Darth Ruin began the new Sith Wars, raining destruction upon the Jedi and Old Republic. Ruling alongside his squire Lord Eraticus, who wore special dark armor infused with the Force, Darth Ruin sent wave after wave of his own men at the enemy, sacrificing his people without care for the prosperity of anyone other than himself. Recognizing that their loyalty, valor, and hard work amounted to no personal gain, the Dark Lord's acolytes conspired to end his reign. In the end, Darth Ruin was so consumed by his own plans and dismissive of his underlings, he failed to see the threat growing around him and was assassinated by his own Sith disciples. Consolidating power, new leadership quickly emerged and the war continued, as did the problem of infighting and betrayal for the Sith, with leaders assassinated, factions breaking apart, and internal wars for control of the Order. Similarly, the Jedi and Republic were weakened by political infighting, with their own factions struggling for power at the expense of the war effort. Thus, the new Sith Wars of Darth Ruin continued on for a thousand years, considered by many Dark Lords to be the bloodiest and most wasteful of their conflicts, eventually leading to the weakening of both orders and collapse of their governments. Though Darth Ruin, founder of the new Sith Order, was assassinated by Acolytes, his war against the Republic went on for centuries, with Dark Lords recapturing many of the planets they once ruled, like Xyost and Yavin 4. Rising in opposition to the new Sith were their ancient enemies in the Jedi Order, yet this proved no simple task as they were faced with both internal division and external scrutiny over events like the Battle of Uba 4 in 1800 BBY when their victory caused a Sith superweapon to unleash a deadly chemical utterly devastating the native population. By 1750 BBY, a mysterious dark side spirit known as the Dark Underlord took physical form and emerged as leader of the new Sith, supported by an army of Black Knights under the command of a great Zeltron general. Though no one was certain about the Underlord's origins, some suggested he was summoned from the Chaos Dimension, another plane of existence where dark side disciples went after death, while others claimed he was the spirit of Zendor Reborn, the ancient dark Jedi who caused the first great schism in their order thousands of years earlier. 
based out of Mal Revor, the Dark Underlord dual wielded Sith swords and fought on the front lines of battle to great effect until he at last met his match in the Jedi Master Murtaugh, who made it his personal mission to destroy the Dark Side leader. Forging an alliance with the Mandalorians in 1750 BBY, they invaded the enemy's home base in the Battle of Mal Rev IV, allowing Murtaugh to confront the Underlord while his allies distracted the Black Knights. In the end, the Jedi was victorious and killed the Underlord, yet in doing so fell to the dark side. As the fight continued to go back and forth, the Republic saw a string of important victories at Gaps 9, Corfelion, and King's Galquick in the year 1500 BBY, while the Sith, ever divided and warring against each other, attempted to regain momentum by allying with the Deveronians and Hyshans, eventually leading to the critical Battle of Mizra in 1466. Though they lacked a unifying leader, the disparate lords of the Sith joined together to win a great victory against their light side opponents, forcing them into retreat. Yet as they attempted to pull back, the Sith charged forward and killed the powerful Jedi organizing their movements through battle meditation, thereby leaving light side forces in panic and disarray, resulting in their slaughter. When it was all over, estimates claimed 500,000 warriors were lost in the fighting, with hundreds of Jedi Knights falling to the dark side. As momentum once again shifted towards the Sith, a new Dark Lord emerged, planning to end the centuries-long division and self-sabotage that weakened their order and held them back from conquering the galaxy. Settling on the planet Almus, the Zolosian male became Darth Riven, a name taken from a corrupted Sith text, possibly written by Darth Revan, a legendary Sith Lord who ruled during the Jedi Civil War. A powerful Sith master in his own right, Riven terraformed the planet, built a mighty fortress, and raised an army of battle lords, dark side warriors bound to each other through the force, making it impossible for them to turn against each other, as any harm they tried to inflict would reverse against them. Devoted to Sith alchemy, Riven experimented on his apprentice Darsin, ultimately killing his body while enslaving his spirit and dooming him to guard the fortress for eternity. Yet while Riven's dark side powers and martial strength grew, he'd also discovered a threat unlike any he'd seen before. Learning that he was drawn to Almas by the Dark Staff, an ancient, sentient Sith relic able to consume vast amounts of force energy and unleash it to terrible devastation. Though Riven was tempted to use it, he knew the Dark Staff was intelligent and ultimately answered only to itself, and thus was determined to see it destroyed. But in the end, the Dark Staff was victorious, as Riven took it for himself, and as a result, destroyed everything he built. Rising up against Darth Riven, the Jedi and Republic gathered their forces and struck his base directly in the Battle of Almas. As the opposing forces engaged each other, the Dark Lord finally succumbed to temptation and took hold of the Dark Staff, at which point it created a mighty force storm, destroying his Battle Lord army and tearing a hole through time and space. Arriving on the planet Rusan, three centuries in the future, Darth Riven found himself in the midst of yet another pivotal battle between the Jedi and Sith. Yet thanks to the Dark Staff, he was drained of all Force powers, allowing him to be easily cut down by a passing warrior. Though the Jedi and Republic were free from the threat of Darth Riven and power was shifting back in their favor, centuries of conflict and internal division left them on the verge of economic, political, and military ruin. Seeing no other choice, the Jedi involved themselves directly, becoming generals and politicians, with members of the Order sitting as Supreme Chancellors for the final four centuries of the conflict. Their lack of resources and manpower also meant they could no longer sustain holonet communications beyond the core, and lacked the services necessary to stop the Kandorian Plague from ravaging many of their worlds, sometimes killing up to two-thirds of populated areas. Taking advantage of their growing weakness, the Sith Lord Belia Darzu reigned on the deep core world of Tython from 1250 to 1230 BBY. Becoming so skilled in force alchemy and sorcery, she grew her slave army by reanimating the bodies of slain opponents and through the creation of Techno Beasts, whereby she converted the organic parts of living Sith spawn into metal and machine. Waging the Sictus War against the Republican Jedi for two decades, she succeeded in leading her forces to victory, but was ultimately assassinated by the Makrosa Order, a dark side cult allied with the Sith who turned against Darzu over territorial disputes. Losing their leader, the Sith once again fell to infighting, leaving both the Republic and Empire in disarray as they entered the last century of the conflict, known to history as the Republic Dark Age. 
without a strong leader to unify their factions. Independent Sith Lords rampaged across the galaxy, creating their own realms, constantly at war with everyone around them. Distracted by their work keeping the fledgling Republic together, the Jedi lacked the strength to engage in these conflicts, leading some in the Order to strike out on their own, like Master Van Artrees and his apprentice Kara Holt, who fought individual wars against the Sith. As more Jedi started fighting back on their own, they grew estranged from the Order, and upon liberating worlds and systems, became heroes to the local population who asked them to stay as rulers. Thus began the era of Jedi Lords, who established hereditary dynasties to rule over private realms, keeping them safe from any and all danger. Joining together in an alliance of lords, these rebel Jedi formed a Grand Council, which was seen as a direct rival to the High Council on Coruscant. By 1066 BBY, the new Sith were once again on the rise when the Dark Lady Vilia Kalamandra took power, creating an empire she ruled with ruthless cunning. Giving birth to seven children, she decided to choose her heir through a charge metrica, a contest to see who could expand their empire the most. Inevitably, this turned into a full-scale war between the children, leaving all dead save for the victor Chagris. Naming her son as heir to the Empire, he formed the Chagras Hegemony and went to war with the Republic, though in truth his mother was the power behind the throne. After the death of her son in 1040 BBY, a second charge Matrica was arranged, this time between her many grandchildren, resulting in yet another devastating internal struggle which further weakened their family and led to their downfall. Yet only a few decades later, in 1010 BBY, a thousand years of conflict at last saw the beginning of the end, when Skier Khan, a former Jedi turned Dark Lord, ended the division that plagued them for centuries by forming the Brotherhood of Darkness, an order of equals who could at last unite in solidarity against their true enemies in the Jedi and Republic. Raised from childhood as a Jedi, Skier Khan was a force user of tremendous potential seen by many of his teachers and colleagues as the future of their order and best hope for victory against the Sith. Specializing in battle meditation, Khan was a charming, charismatic leader able to use the force to enhance his powers of persuasion, gaining many loyal followers throughout his life. Unfortunately for the Order, they did not anticipate Khan's increasing radicalization as he began to blame the Jedi for the woes of the galaxy, believing it was their passive nature and non-interventionist policies which allowed the Sith to gain so much power in the galaxy. Still believing him to be their greatest hope and seeking to temper his extremist views, the High Council granted Khan the rank of Master only for him and his closest followers to abandon the Order entirely in the schism of 1010 BBY. Seeking to prove the veracity of his claims, the former Jedi and his people set off for Sith space, taking the fight directly to the enemy and one by one conquered them all. His victory was so complete, the Jedi Order sent a message of congratulations, all the while failing or refusing to see that their former friend fell to the dark side and now reigned as Dark Lord of a united Sith Order and Empire. Coming to believe the light side Jedi were the greatest enemy to peace in the galaxy, Skier Khan sought out the dark side and knowledge of the Sith to form his new philosophy. Yet while he embraced many of their ideas, he also saw a fundamental flaw in their teachings, as they focused too much on individual power, creating an endless cycle of betrayal and assassinations, as the only way for a subordinate to reach the highest level of power was to eliminate the one occupying that position. Therefore, Khan knew that anything he accomplished as Dark Lord was ultimately fated to ruin upon his inevitable assassination, once again leaving the Order in chaos and civil war. Determined to end this cycle of failure, Khan created the Brotherhood of Darkness, doing what almost no other Sith Lord in history would ever even consider by voluntarily surrendering some of his power to form a leadership council where every member was a Dark Lord of equal standing. Enacting his philosophy of rule by the strong, Khan remained in a position of leadership but now brought his ideas to the council where they voted on how to proceed. Convincing many this was the only way their order could remain united to destroy their enemies, Khan won the loyalty of many Sith warlords like Cordis and Cassim during his campaign of conquest. Though he now had an army of Sith Lords at his command, in addition to Dark Jedi like Kopej and Latour, Khan knew it was still nowhere near enough to defeat the Republic, and so grew the Brotherhood into a true galactic power by recruiting all four sensitive citizens from their worlds and training them in specialized Sith academies, while non-Force users were brought into their military ranks to be used as foot soldiers. 
Seeking to end a thousand years of war, Skier Khan and the Brotherhood of Darkness invaded the Republic in 1006 BBY, winning the critical Battle of Korriban to take back their ancestral home. Under the command of Dark Lord Cordis, Korriban was home to their most prestigious Sith Academy, where only their most promising Force users were sent to become Sith Lords, the equivalent of Jedi Masters. At other schools, lesser students were trained to become acolytes and adepts, those who served the Sith Lords and were similar in rank to Jedi Knights, while any with even less potential became assassins, spies, warriors, and marauders. Growing their strength significantly, the height of their power saw the Brotherhood use an army of 20,000 Sith alongside their traditional military and fleet to bring the Republic and Jedi Order to the very edge of disaster, even threatening to invade the capital. Yet for all his victories and cunning, everything Skir Khan built was ultimately brought down by two opponents, one an enemy in the Jedi Order, and the other a fellow Sith Lord who trained in the Academy on Korriban. Born to the ruling Jedi Lord dynasty of the Yushan Sector, Hoth followed the traditions of his family and joined the Jedi Order, eventually becoming Battlemaster in the Temple on Coruscant. Yet relations with the Order soon soured, as he alone saw the threat posed by former Master Skir Khan, refusing to blindly follow his colleagues into denial and appeasement. Therefore, Hoth left the Order and sought support from the Rebel Grand Council of Jedi Lords, who were far more willing to take on their Sith enemies. Forming the Army of Light, Lord Hoth was free from the restrictions of the traditional Jedi Order and so recruited as many Force users as possible to fight in their war, regardless of potential or age. Knowing they were not yet ready to face the Brotherhood head-on, Hoth began his campaign by targeting systems in the Outer Rim, far from the center of Sith power, liberating many worlds to recruit from the local population. Meanwhile, Dark Lord Khan and the Brotherhood continued their advance towards the Galactic Core, eventually conquering a relatively unimportant planet with meager defenses in the First Battle of Rusan, entirely unaware that it was here the fate of the galaxy would be decided. Though the Sith also won the Second Battle of Rusan, when the Jedi Order and Republic tried and failed to take it back, everything changed in the Third Battle of Rusan, when the Brotherhood suffered a devastating defeat at the hands of Lord Hoth and the Army of Light, which entered the war by sending all their forces to liberate Rusan. Shocked by the sudden appearance of an unexpected Jedi army, Khan rallied his Sith forces, including all Academy students, save for those on Korriban, as their best and brightest needed to finish their training. While the Sith gathered on Rusan, the rest of their traditional military and fleet continued to move towards Coruscant and the core, but progress was slowed without the aid of their Force-sensitive leaders. Despite being outnumbered and in an inferior tactical position, Khan found a weakness in the enemy lines, allowing them to win the fourth battle of Rusan and regain a significant foothold on the planet. The war then devolved into more of a prolonged stalemate, with momentum shifting back and forth. During the fifth battle of Rusan, the Sith were on the verge of victory when Valentine Farfalla descended onto the planet with Jedi reinforcements, forcing them into retreat. The Jedi were once again victorious in the Sixth Battle of Rusan, but at this point had become overextended in both men and resources, allowing the Sith to regain the advantage going into the Seventh Battle when Khan brought all their Sith students and teachers from Korriban to deal the final blow against the Army of Light. Yet after so many years of war, the Army of Darkness was only a tenth of what it was at the height of their power. Although Hoth's forces were technically only an offshoot of the Jedi Order on Coruscant, with many of their knights and masters remaining behind to defend the core, by this point the Army of Light was truly the only hope for their people and so was supported by both Jedi and Republic. But in truth, light side forces were weakened to such a degree Khan might still have achieved ultimate victory if not for a secret enemy growing in the shadows, the one Sith willing to stand up and expose the weakness of the Brotherhood. Born in 1026 BBY on the poor mining world of Apatros, Dessel was the Force-sensitive son of an alcoholic, abusive father who called the boy the bane of his existence. After killing his father with raw Force power and later a Republic ensign, Dessel fled the planet and joined the Sith army where he proved an exceptional soldier and commander. 
coming to the attention of Lord Kopez. He was sent to the Sith Academy on Korriban, where he took the name Bane and became one of their most promising students. Though he struggled for a time, he attended special classes, studied ancient texts ignored by the others, formed an alliance with another top student, Githany, and defeated his greatest rival in single combat. Yet as Bane gained more knowledge and power, he started to question the leadership of Lord Khan and his departure from traditional Sith teachings, knowing that a true master of the dark side must be unrivaled and unmatched. Publicly defying Khan, he declared himself Darth Bane, embracing the title of Sith Lord's past, which was banned from the Brotherhood because it suggested superiority and encouraged rivalry. Though Darth Bane agreed infighting was a problem for the Sith Order, he believed Khan's solution was equally self-defeating. The Force was not fire to be passed from torch to torch, but venom powerful in concentrated form, yet weak when diluted. In other words, with so many Sith Lords sharing the power of the dark side, none could achieve their true potential, and so the Order as a whole would never be strong enough to defeat the Jedi and conquer the galaxy. Abandoning the Brotherhood, he left the Academy to search for ancient knowledge, and soon found the holocron of Darth Revan on Lehan, an ancient Dark Lord of enormous power and wisdom. Learning much from his new master, the rogue Sith defeated both assassination attempts sent against him, first killing his former master Kasim in single combat, and then surviving several poison kisses from Githany, who sought to prove herself to Khan by exploiting her relationship with Bane. Realizing the Brotherhood needed to be destroyed so the Order could be reformed, he returned to the Sith and feigned a conciliatory attitude, claiming he wished to use the knowledge he gained to help them win the war. Despite Khan's mistrust, Bane grew so powerful he was able to manipulate the mind of the Brotherhood leader, convincing him to accept advice and use a thought bomb against their enemies, an ancient dark side weapon able to annihilate the Army of Light. Gathering every last Sith together, who to Bane's disgust were all granted the title of Dark Lord, Khan led them into a cave system with the intent of luring the Jedi to follow them. Suspecting a trap, Lord Hoth gathered a hundred volunteers and led them into the cave, where Skier Khan, now well beyond the point of madness, ended a thousand years of war by unleashing the dark side weapon, killing every Sith Lord and Jedi present, while also trapping their spirits for thousands of years. Having destroyed the Brotherhood, Darth Bane remained as last of the Sith Lords, and so reformed the Order according to the personal philosophy he developed throughout his life, guided primarily by the Rule of Two, believing there must be only one master to embrace the power of the Dark Side, and a single apprentice to desire that power. Though Skier Khan's Brotherhood of Darkness only survived for 10 years and was often seen as a perversion of the Sith way, there were some who appreciated his philosophy of cooperative rule by the strong with Khan's former apprentice Volta Danat, who left the Brotherhood because he believed the acquisition of knowledge was more important than the pursuit of power, incorporated some of their teachings into forming the Black Guard of Mustafar. Khan was also admired by Darth Millennial, an apprentice within the lineage of Bane, who was ultimately kicked out of the Order for his disagreements, allowing him to create the Dark Force Cult, which later became the Prophets of the Dark Side on Drum and Koss. Yet most surprising of all, Darth Bane himself showed some respect for the Dark Lord after his death, answering a question from his apprentice Darth Xana about whether the former leader was weak by realizing Khan was a fool but could not be accused of weakness. Thus ended the new Sith Wars, from Darth Ruin to Dark Lord Khan, with a new order rising from the ashes, who after a thousand years of planning, would finally unleash the revenge of the Sith. Love Star Wars Legends? Then why not check out Audible, where they have the largest collection of audiobooks available. Sign up now and get a free audiobook along with two Audible Originals, or else give the gift of membership to someone you know. If you prefer to read your stories, then click on the link to the Kindle Unlimited plan and get access to as many ebooks as you wish. If you haven't already, be sure to check out the Darth Bane trilogy, exploring the life of this infamous Sith Lord, as well as the rise and fall of the Brotherhood of Darkness. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Kyle Blitzsword, Barachado, Tio the Iron Banker, and Daydre Dragon's Wit. If you'd like to help the channel, please go to patreon.com slash civilizationx, where you can get early access to videos, vote on future content, and access the Patreon-only series, Heroes of Lore and Legends.